Hey there, today we are starting part three of controlling your Christmas lights with a Raspberry Pi. Let's go. Hey there, this is Tom of Tom's Tech Show. And today we're doing the part three of controlling your Christmas lights with the Raspberry Pi. Um, part one was getting the wiring done. Um, I use a big piece of plywood, get all the parts on there, uh, get everything wired up. That took longer than I really wanted to, but I mean, I actually built this twice. I built one for another friend of ours um, who also runs their lights this way. Um, so it reminds me, I need to update their software because I have new software, a uh, new algorithm. Oh joy, algorithms. Okay, so I've already started putting up some lights. Okay, so well, then part two was, that was part one hardware. Part two is uh, the software that is on the Raspberry Pi. That's the algorithm. That's the functions that need to be executed in order to run everything. And the, the song file and the sequencing file. Okay, so let's get the mouse working again. Too many computers here. And to go to my second monitor. Now, I do have some lights up on the house. Right now, they're all connected to one outlet because we're just staging things right now. I have my bells up. Um, and then if you see here, there's um, all the lights are here. There, All these strands are kind of twisted together and I have zip ties on them. This is the red, green, blue, and white. So I do that so it makes it easier to hang. I just kind of hang them under the eave and that also helps produce light, puts light against the house and kind of turns the house a little bit of a color. So it kind of makes the light seem brighter than just being out on the front of the gutter, which doesn't really do much for it. So. Um, but what hooking them all together does is at the end of the year when I take them down I have a big plastic tubs that I put them in and I start you know with one end and just start going in a circle and coiling them together until you know you get to the end and then you can just you know you close it up and, and put it away but then next year when you take it out you just grab one end and start pulling and there are no kinks or anything it doesn't get twisted up or kinked because it's such a big uh, mass of cable that it doesn't get twisted in itself and you can just pull it out of the box and it just goes right along in front of the house. Makes it just wonderful for doing that. Solves the big wad of Christmas light problem. Okay, well today we're doing the, the Vixen part. This is kind of the last part other than one that I'm going to do probably at the end once I get everything done and up on the house maybe this next weekend. Um, showing one of the songs playing the the display and i'm probably going to use the carol the bells one because that one's going to take a lot of work i'm already i'm only like a third of the way through but so in in vixen the first thing we need to do is to set up these elements and patching and controllers so i'm, I'm just going to delete these because we're going to go over it and and cover how it gets all set up and patched and controlled so here we start with in over in controllers you can start at either end but in controllers i'm going to have a generic serial controller and i'm going to click plus and this is going to be raspberry pi and then i'm going to say eight outputs so that gives me this list of outputs one through eight over here on generic serial and here we're going to add a generic numbered group and say call that a pi and this is also eight outputs. We want to configure a dimming curve? We're going to say no. And we're going to say how do these handle color? It says they're all a single color and don't change color. The color is blue. That doesn't really matter. That doesn't make any difference because of how we're exporting the file. Okay, so it creates these properties. So I have an item one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and an output one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight. Now I've come in and I've renamed them to pi white one and uh, rename this one to pi green two and then rename pi red. What's the next number gonna be? Not three, it's going to be four. Okay, so four, then eight, 16, 32, 64, 128. So we're using those numbers just to remind me that when I'm in the uh, sequence editing, on the channel you'll see when i get to that page um, that's the number i need to be putting 
the uh, value, the custom value on. Okay, but now we're here in this thing. I need to select, I need to patch these so that they know where to go. So white one goes to output one and we click patch. Okay, then it says patched element patched. Then we go to the second one and we go all the way down the row until we finally get to the bottom. And this takes a minute here, patch and da, 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 put patch and another patch and the last one patch and the last one patch okay so if i look at a if i select these on the top and i hit graphical view we'll have this kind of display i've got this controller whatever the color is going to an output so all that is wired up so I already have it set up with everything renamed, so I'm just going to cancel out of this. But that's how you would set this part up. And this needs to be done first before you can start sequencing the files. Okay, so we're going to open our Carol the Bells sequence. And so here you can see I already do have my white 1, red 2, green 4, blue 8, trees 16, stars 32, bushes 64, and my bell is 128. So I, that's the custom value that I need to put into the custom field. Now all these other things over here on the left, all these other things, these are all if you are using Vixen to control the system. And you've got all these crazy pixel strands and circles and color washes and everything else which are all very expensive things, but we're going on the cheap, so here we are. So we're down at this device action at the bottom, which is the custom value. So as you play the song, I don't know I can I can play it. I think it plays in here. Okay, so that's the song playing. And and you can see down here the, the bells that are down here that I call my bell that when they hit, that it's turning those relays on and off. You see in part one and part two, I actually ran the script on the switch. You could see the little relays clicking and popping on and off. I had thought to try and maybe find a quieter relay box, but that's this is typically back in the garage and I put uh, boxes and stuff around it so it doesn't, with some insulation in it, so it doesn't actually sound uh, that loud outside when I did this the first year, you could, <laughs> from the street, you could hear clack, 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 clack. So I kind of packed, you know, some insulation around it just to make it so it wasn't quite as loud. But anyway, so I need, if I wanted to have a point in here where I wanted the bells to sound, I would click custom value and drag it out here on this line. Now it says custom value zero. Well, that's not what I want it to be. I want it to be custom bell is 128. So I would come up here and I would type 128, enter. And now that custom value is 128. So whatever length of time I have here for this to be on, this is about a half second in here, that would turn the relay on for that half second. So, and if you wanna move it or you can shorten it, um, one thing you can do if you get several pieces together, you can select them and then you can clone them and then move them over you can move them over and make them bigger or smaller um, so if you have a a typically in some of the songs like like choruses and and um, verses and stuff like they repeat some different things so i can come here i can go copy and then move down a little ways and i can go uh, paste and and stuff to move big chunks of this around so that i'm not having to really do this over and over and over again. So that's kind of what I've done I've done here. You can see some of these pieces where they cascade a little bit like that. Um, that's because I've taken that section, created one, copied, pasted to the next one because it matched. And then once I get to a part where the music changes or the instruments change, then I'll go with a different set or a different pattern of values. So once I get all this done and I get my song all sequenced and I like how it sounds, I like how the where the different pieces are, uh, maybe I've exported and copied it to the Raspberry Pi and run it on the Raspberry Pi to see how it's playing, see how it goes with the clicking and stuff, see if it kind of makes sense, then I want to do a final export. 
So I have this done. I have the file saved. Now we go to export. So what I export to, to is a CSV file. There's a couple different options in here for different players, um, but I'm using just a CSV file. So, and I've set that the timing is usually set at 100 milliseconds, but I set it down to 25 because I want some pretty good resolution on some of this stuff. And it doesn't seem to matter how, with my new algorithm that I wrote, um, it doesn't seem to matter how big the file is because it's just going to pick the matching spot in the song to play that value. And the closer it is to, you know, the more granular the value, the better I think it seems to be matching. Um, so everything else you kind of leave the same. Um, we got the Pi controller selected, of course. We don't need a controller file. Uh, we don't need to enable compression or anything else. I click Start and then click the name that I'm going to export it to. Say so Export, yes. And then once it's done, then we get a file that has these numbers in it. So like here, there's a 0, 2, 0, 0, 16, 0, 0, 0. So those are the numbers that are corresponding with my white, red, green, blue, trees, stars, bushes, and bells. So when the 16 is on, the trees are on. When the 2 is there, the red is on. So and here's a 4. That means that the green lights are on. So this kind of pattern is put into the algorithm, into the Python code, and it just basically adds all of these numbers up. So if I get a something that has a 2 and a 4, they add up to be 6. I send the six, number 6 to the relay board, and it knows I'm turning on 2 and 3. So, and if I send something like here that's 16 and 4, that would be 20, it would know, okay, I'm turning on 3 and 5. So that kind of makes it you know, easy if I really wanted to kind of change this or copy something out of it on the fly, like I wanted to add a couple of, oh, I need to add a couple of numbers here, you know, to change something. I could do that in this file and I would know what I'm doing. You know, I could add a 128, set of 128s here on the end, and and then... I would know that the bells would start coming on and I could, you know, you can take this number and copy it down a little bit. And then the bells would come on at that point, that relay would be triggered. Um, you would want to go, but if you're doing that, you would want to go back to kind of your master, which is in Vixen and update it there. But if you had to edit it on the fly and say, oh, I need this or test something, I want to see how these numbers work or this pattern works, then you can do that um, just by editing the file directly from the Raspberry Pi. I have mine set up so that I can VNC into it um, and then do editing and, and different things like that. Okay, so then you need to just get this um, to however you're going to get it to your Raspberry Pi. You can uh, maybe email it, zip it up, email it yourself, uh, then go to the Raspberry Pi and log into your email and download it. Um, I have a storage NAS in my home because I do backups and hold backups for offsites for other companies and other things like that um, on the cheap for them. So they realize it's in my house and and they just needed something offsite. So I do that a little bit and all my other personal backups and things are stored on the NAS and then pushed off to a cloud storage and stuff. So I can use that to kind of transfer the files to that NAS and then back out to my download to my Raspberry Pi. Um, so, okay. Whew, wow. So that's that kind of end to end getting down to Vixen and how Vixen works. Um, it's, it took a while to kind of figure out how to get the whole thing situated how I wanted it. Like I said, I was doing this ad hoc. I was not going to take stuff that other people had created. I was going to do it all myself. Um, which I kind of like doing. I like being able to, you know, you know, grassroots, just build it up from the bottom and be able to see how it works, where everything's connected um, and all that. So um, if you have any questions about how Vixen works or how I'm using it, I mean, well, I can really only answer questions about how I'm using it. Um, if you have any of those questions, if you have any really technical questions about Vixen, you should probably just go to the Vixen website and 
go to their forums and ask them. But other than that, how I'm using it, um, you can see, you know, I can answer some questions about how I'm using it and what my method is and how I have it set up um, and set up for my songs and everything else and how that works. Um, if you have another way that you're doing this and creating kind of sequencing files or how you're, you're matching the music and the, the timing, then, you know, share that with everybody else. And, you know, it's maybe there's a better way um, of doing it, but this is the one that I came up with. And so far it's been working. And as oh, I've rewritten the software, it's gotten more, more accurate and, and I'm liking it a lot more. All right. <sighs> so thanks for watching this one. Um, uh, like, share, subscribe. Uh, again, feel free to comment and uh, put pictures and videos out of your, of your lights and how they're set up and how they work once it gets closer to Christmas. It'll be good to see everybody else use and have their own way to do it and set it up and get it going. All right. Well, thanks for watching this one. Take care.